Hello and welcome to Monday Thursday Worship at Lima United Methodist Church. I'm Karen Bartkowski, the Associate Pastor here at Lima Church, and I'm really glad to be worshiping with you on this holy day. Let us now center ourselves for a time of worship, a time to put our chores and our tasks of our daily life aside, clear our minds and our thoughts, and make room for God to speak to us and for us to encounter and experience God today. Enjoy the gift of music from Mary King.
scripture reading is from the book of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. Jesus washes his disciples' feet. It was just before the Passover festival, Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took out off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. This is the word of God for the people of God. So it's Thursday of Holy Week. The days between the joyous events of Palm Sunday and Easter. For many Christians, this is a time of seriousness, of reflection, and of remembering. Most Christians use these days to remember and reflect on Jesus' last days with his disciples. We remember his poignant teaching and his fervent prayer and his ultimate sacrifice. We have learned to appreciate the weight of Jesus' words and actions on these last few days. But that night long ago, the disciples just thought it was another dinner, another celebration, another Passover meal. They weren't expecting anything out of the ordinary. They were there to celebrate the historical story of God's salvation as they had always done as Jews. They were there to retell the story of the Israelites' journey out of Egypt and of God's protection. Our Jewish friends are actually celebrating that exact celebration just this week. One of the most significant parts of the meal is when a child asks the expected and the rehearsed questions, starting with, why is this night different from all others? The answers then come from the adults and the leaders, and they use the food of the Seder to retell the story and to highlight God's providence and protection. We can only assume that the same question was asked at the Passover Seder with Jesus and his disciples. Why is this night any different from all others? The question was asked with the expectation of the typical and traditional answer. But we have the gift of knowing the rest of this story and being able to read this scripture with the full knowledge and awareness that this was not just any other dinner party. The answer is, to the age-old question would forever be different for Christians. Why is this night any different from all others? That night over 2,000 years ago was different because Jesus didn't just teach us how to love. He showed us how to love. In verse 15 of our scripture, Jesus himself says, I have set for you an example that you should do as I have done. And later in that same chapter, in verse 34, Jesus summarizes the whole actions of the evening with with these words. He says, a new command I give you, love one another 
As I have loved you, so must you love one another. And that's why we call this day Monday Thursday, from the Latin mandantum, which means commandment. It's the day that we remember and recommit to living out the commands of Jesus, to love each other as he showed love. So what did Jesus exactly do that night? We heard in the scripture read by the Christengers that he washed the disciples' feet. Remember, the roads in those days would have been made of dirt, and so they would have either been dusty or muddy, and the fashionable footwear of the day was sandals. So I think it goes without saying that people had dirty feet, really dirty feet. And it would have been expected that the homeowner would have provided water and a servant to wash the feet of those who entered his home. Jesus himself assumed the role of this servant and washed the feet of his disciples. So is that what we're supposed to learn? How to wash someone's feet? Really? (laughs) Isn't it hard enough to keep our hands washed in this time of COVID-19? Some theologians believe that Jesus meant for his disciples to learn just that, to literally wash each other's feet. But many believe that Jesus was really trying to model something much more life-giving. In fact, Jesus himself tells Peter that unless I wash you, you have no part with me. This foot washing ritual connects his disciples to Jesus. Then Jesus goes on to say, no servant is greater than his master. Jesus washed his feet, washed their feet as an act of humility and love. So there you have it. End of the message. Jesus, one day before he dies on the cross, teaches us to be connected to each other and connected to him because he washes someone's feet. Sounds so easy, doesn't it? Just love everyone and we'll be connected to God through Jesus. It's really so easy. Why do we struggle so much to love each other? One of my all-time favorite books is Dr. Gary Chapman's Five Love Languages. This book has sold over 12 million copies, and it's been on the New York Times bestseller since 2007. Dr. Chapman is a marriage counselor who began to see some themes as he helped couples through the valleys of their marriages. And then he was able to expand his theories to include books about children and teens and singles. He suggests that people have a primary love language, a way that they like to give and receive love. He says there's five of them. And here they are. Words of affirmation. Words like, I love you. You did a great job. You are so thoughtful or any other compliment really are important to people who speak this love language. Quality time. These people value spending non-distracted time with those they love. They want to have others undivided attention. This time can be spent talking, playing games, or sometimes just being in the same room. Gifts. These folks love something tangible. They feel love and show love when they have thought about and purchased or made a special gift. Acts of service. For these people, actions speak louder than words. They want someone to recognize their need and do something about it. These are the people who do the dishes or take out the trash for those who love them. And when they feel loved, when they do the chores for those people. And finally, physical touch. A hug, a touch on the shoulder or holding hands is really important to these people for showing and receiving love. This is far more than romantic physical touch. And of course, it's never inappropriate touch. These folks are struggling right now in this time of social distancing for sure. I can almost hear you say, wait, that's me, or that's my husband or wife, or wow, that's my oldest daughter, or now I understand my neighbor just a little bit more. Most people, when given these choices, can identify their own primary love language. Dr. Chapman's book has a quiz that can help and lots more information than I can give you here. 
But I think what we can learn is that loving each other is not one size fits all. Loving each other requires us to know the other person, to seek to understand them, and then be willing to change our approach in order for them to feel the love we have for them. If we take these five love languages and look again at our scripture, maybe we can understand a little bit more how Jesus was really teaching us how to love. Just like us, the disciples had different understandings of love and felt love in different ways. Maybe we can find ourselves in the story in both how we give and receive love. Well, the mere act of completing the menial task of washing feet shows us that Jesus was speaking the language of acts of service. This was a job that was not expected of him. His primary motivation was to do something good for another person with no benefit to himself. Obviously, the act of foot washing requires physical touch. I can imagine Jesus taking his time with each person, pouring the water, scrubbing the dirt away, and then gently drying the feet. This unrushed and dedicated time with each person would speak volumes to those who speak the language of quality time. I don't believe Jesus's decision to wash the disciples' feet was a spontaneous one. I believe he had planned to show his love to them through this act. For those who speak the language of gifts, this planning and thoughtful gesture would have expressed love. And finally, words of affirmation. Jesus always speaks words of encouragement and, to su- and support to those he loves. He tells Peter, you don't understand this now, but later you will. He essentially says, Peter, I believe in you. You are bright. Hang in there. You'll get this soon. I love reading this story with these love languages in mind. Jesus really does show us how to love each other. He really does show us actual ways to express love in a way that others will recognize as love. I would encourage you to go back and read John chapter 13 in this context. In fact, you can read many of the stories about Jesus' interaction with people and see how he was able to exude love to all who came in contact with him. In his wholeness, Jesus feels love using any of the languages. So as we give our true selves to Jesus, we are expressing love to him and to others. As we seek to live our lives as Christians, as little Christs, we need to examine ourselves, our actions, our thoughts, and our motives. This reflection is best done in light of the life of Jesus. Holy Week, and especially this Monday Thursday, gives us time and pause to make this reflection in both the remembrance of Jesus' teaching and a recommitment to living our lives as disciples of the one who loved us so much that he died on the cross. In the next several minutes, as we listen to Mary King play the song of the gift of love, I encourage you to spend time reflecting on how you can remember and recommit to the commandment of Jesus to love each other. How do you know that Jesus loves you? How do you express love to him? How do you know that others love you? What makes you feel loved? How do you express love to others? I pray that this time with God will make this night different than all others. Amen.
Dear friends, these are strange times for sure. We usually gather for worship on this holy day. We feel connected as we celebrate and remember what Jesus has done for us, and we look forward to Easter because we know it's coming. We're in dark days right now, but we know better days are coming. So find strength in the words from Romans 8. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor anything present, nor anything to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. My friend, you are loved by God more than you can imagine. Lean into that love and share that love. In the name of Jesus. Amen.